Running a service business is no small thing. It's a lot of work to keep everything running smoothly, particularly when you've got people on the road moving around between job to job. In this video, I'm going to be unboxing SimPro, which is a software that helps you to manage your field service business and helps you to make sure that you get paid for the jobs that you do. A couple of the key points of SimPro are that it helps you to invoice correctly, helps you save a ton of time in your business, integrates all of your payments, make sure that you get reminded when jobs need to be invoiced or when they need to be followed up and make sure that you have a business that you can actually hand over or sell or exit at some point in the future because you've got systems in place. Let's dive in. Okay, as always, we're jumping straight on the website just to have a quick look. So we can see that it's generally targeted towards electrical, plumbing, HVAC, security, fire protection, etc. But you, if you go into the, who is it for? There's a few extras if you go all industries. Now I've heard of people, IT companies using this. Basically, if you need to send people anywhere, it's really important that you have a system in place that you can track the jobs that are scheduled, that you can track the people that need to attend those jobs, perhaps what equipment they need to take with them. So you can see just some of the examples, landscaping, gas, construction, cleaning services, facilities. Now there are three major components to this platform and that is service so all of your services you get a call you go out you go to site you fix problem x the next one is project management there's quite a detailed project management process in here so you could you know for installations or planned works that sort of thing and the other major one is asset management so asset management is say for example fire protection services quite often need to manage the fire systems that are in a building and having assets listed on a register means that for that building i know what room, what floor, and what devices should be in there? Is it a fire hydrant, an alarm on the roof, things like that. So having an asset management system is invaluable. And there's a whole bunch of PDF stuff in the background to be able to send out your JSAs, your reports. And there's one thing that I really like about this is that you've got franchise or multi-locations. If you've got a business that's got a few other businesses that you can attach to it, then you can use the multi-location. Or if you decide you want to create multi-unit franchise, then you can have your parent entity and then all the sub entities underneath that and you can do reporting at scale, which I think is rare to find in a platform. So it's actually quite powerful. Now it does come with a mobile application. So you can use the app for your text on the road and then you can have one or two people in the office. That's what it's kind of designed for, sort of like that five and up business. However, if you've got up to a couple hundred, I'm, I've seen people using SimPro. So it's actually it can get your business quite far. As always, one of my favorite places to look is the integrations because if it doesn't talk to anything else, then it's it's an island and it's something that's a pain to update, maintain, etc. This one's got heaps. Let's have a look. In the integrations, we can see we've got your standard ones. So Myob, Zero, and QuickBooks. Now I do know that there is a two-way sync with the Zero and QuickBooks data. So for example, when an invoice is paid, you do have some enterprise connection to Oracle NetSuite. You could see there's some tax related things. And some of the best ones, I, I have seen people with Zoho One connect with SyncEasy. That will also help you connect to a few other platforms. You can connect your Zapier is a good middleware product that allows you to connect to a wider range of things. So you can build your own low code APIs. As you have a look further down, we can see there are some um, integrations that are standard. So you've got your, your Gmail, you've got your Outlook. But one of the things I think is really cool about this is the ability to connect to wholesalers, particularly if you're in certain types of industries, mainstream, perhaps plumbing, electrical, etc. You've got the ability to connect with the people that provide you the stock so you don't have to go and upload all the inventory you can go and find it or connect to it which you can see here so we've got some of the major platforms so you can see this wholesale integrator and we've got Corey's electrical there's flame stop if you're in the gas supply industries electrical distributors there's midis down here as well there's quite a lot there's even micro plumbing there's quite a wide range of files here so it's a makes it a lot easier when you're trying to bring information through let's get, dive into the platform now and have a look at what it can actually do for you. I've just logged in and we are on the dashboard. Now the dashboard gives you a few reports. We've got our sales targets. I've got some dummy data in here. Initial thoughts is it's nice and simple. We've got a pie chart here to show you exactly the breakdown of your cost centers. Hover over here. This is quite a handy feature, particularly if you're doing field service management jobs. You've got the ability to see weather in, in my region here in Brisbane. I can see exactly what the weather is and for the next couple of days as well. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I could change my location 
location. At the moment, it's using my current location. If I did have that multi-company, I would look up here and you can see this trade business. That would actually be a pick list and then I could select from the company that I want to view. We're currently in the sales dashboard. If you see, there's a pick list here. We've got a service dashboard, accounts, projects, etc. You can use those views to really start to see the data that's important to you. And on the service dashboard, I've got that mapping and I can look in on the right here and see current activities, today's schedule, and then priority response. So if I click on this job, the dummy data, they're all overdue. But if I click in here, I can see the summary description. I can see the customer, the site. There's some other bits and pieces here. This is a new job. Here's what's in there. We've got the activity feed as well. So we can see that the job was created. If I want to go on the timeline, I can add a new note, search for past notes. And then if I want to make them to the customer or not in the customer portal, I can go to parts and labor. If you look at this as a menu and then there's a sub menu across there, I can go in and play with different things. So the name, perhaps I want to change who the manager is, the salesperson is. If I want to look at retention, retention is an amount, particularly in the building side of things. You might have a $10,000 retention or a 10% of the whole job just to make sure that everything is, is working in the build. And then at the end, you can claim that back. You've got commission dates, set off dates, and there's all sorts. Let's disable retention. I can go through and see any tasks. And in task templates, I do like a task template because it does save a lot of time. If we say project job and then we go create task, got a new pop out here. And then it can give me the description, the notes, go to custom, stakeholder, you can add any particular stakeholder. So I might want to add, for example, this person and they can be assigned as well. And then assigning the customer from the account. We go into attachments, link tasks, logs, etc. All right. So let's cancel that one. In attachments, obviously I can have any kind of documentations. If I needed to have takeout forms, JSAs, site audits, things like that, that could be stored in there. Go into contractor. We have, we could create a new work order. And let's just say I'm going to do a work order for this particular contractor. This is what we're going to ask for. And then we can add whether or not the contract is to supply the materials, whether it covers labor or what the materials cost is. And then any attachments. So if there was any requirements or specification sheets, then we can put it on there. We'd have a look at stock in parts and labor. We've got takeoff here, billable items first. If you want to add a bill item you can add a call out or a service fee so you can add that one and that's pre-built in the system so $75 if you wanted to add a supplier quote then you could apply that so particularly if you're being tasked to go out and get quotes from different vendors you can put those in and make sure that they're included in the billable parts and labor and then on any other items that you add directly so you've got your labor items here I'm in the billable area section and you can see that we've got parts up here. Now I've gone to this takeoff section and then I've added a number to some of these and this is a, or a kit and then that's added products back on this side. I can add my labor kit. So say for example, you're going to go and do the PowerPoints of a three bedroom home. You could have small, medium and large version. You can have pre-builds as well. If you've got a plumbing pack, you can create a pre-build. You can add all the parts. You can add any attachments, etc. as well. Catalog is effectively your stock catalog and I've got a few items that I can search for in here. I've clicked into the catalog item and I can give it a inventory or if it's a multi-currency part number, manufacturer, country of origin, I can add different pricing tiers, custom fields, if there's any specific attributes, batch numbers, that sort of thing. Pricing, so that you've got price tier. You can also price for different regions. So you've got tier two, tier three, you could have you know, region pricing if something is a little bit far out for you. Your suppliers, who actually supplies those goods, then any attachments, linked items, stock, keep an inventory of it, and then just see in the history. So let's go back here. Um, there's your stock count. So I can go and check different people's vans and then I can see how much stock is in each van, which then becomes effectively a mini rolling warehouse. And then you've got your one-off items. If you just needed to sell something, it was extremely rare, you create like an open item for it, but at least you can then track what was done. Let's have a look at schedule. So in schedule is where we can start to see what the team might look like. So we can see there might be three people or a group or a couple of bands in a particular team. Then you can start to see and schedule out particular jobs for different days and different times. If I go back, so you can see we're looking at Monday at, we're just past 11.15 a.m. And then if we wanted to display 
different views, uh, whether or not you display the calendar. We've got normal time. Perhaps we might want to look at overtime. The other one I can do is I can look at individuals so we can see there's all these notifications in the system here. So the amount of time schedule is the different to the amount of time being billed. We've done a quote for six hours and then we put 10 hours in. Then it's going to get give us all these little flags just to remind us to make sure that we are effectively billing for everything. Or even if we've perhaps we've underscheduled for the time that we build. And you may accept that, but at least you know that you're providing the right service. Other thing I like here is if I click on this employee, that's me, I can see that I've got M8. So that's Monday, eight hours, Tuesday, eight hours, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. But say, for example, if I've got someone who's part-time, they only can work half a day, or just have half a day on a Tuesday and slightly less on a Monday. I find that incredibly useful because sometimes it's really hard to know exactly where your contractors are or someone is only two days a week or three days a week part-time. So then in the customer assets, we're looking at under the job. So this job that we clicked on before, it's got parts, labor, cost centers, a schedule, and it's also got assets. So we can see that this has got a ceiling cassette. There is a rear foyer. We can click into those assets and find out a bit more about them. We can see the type of asset. There's a service level or a maintenance schedule that goes on to this page and then any attachments. So the, the documentation for the actual air conditioner, there's the, the image, which can be added from the app as well. And then on the history, I can see what's what's occurred on that account all the way through or that particular asset. So any of the tests that have been done, any of the, the servicing that's been done, particularly good when you've got like contracts with large organizations to manage assets. We've got asset tree view as well. So let's just say you had an air conditioner unit for a building, which had maybe the water cycle on the roof. Then you can have all of the individual assets that are linked to that one in each of the rooms. So going back, I'm just going to click back onto the name there. And it's going to take me back here to the main company view. And we can see that this is something that I looked at just a moment ago. So that's today's schedule. That was what I put on the calendar before. So if we go to people, now we can have a look at our customers and just see, all right, we're going to have a look at this test customer. And again, we can see how many sites they've got. So if they've got, if they're a multi-site organization, what's the history? What have we done with them? Pending complete invoice. And that's across. So there's a menu, a sub menu and a sub sub menu. So we've got all the jobs that are pending, progress, complete, invoiced, archived. We can also look at invoices, tasks, any kind of recurring items. So again, recurring items can be jobs, invoices, archived, a recurring invoice for every year for a maintenance fee, and then also set the job. So maybe we set the job first and then invoice that after the fact. Attachments, and then any logos. So if you want to add a logo for that particular company and have it turn up in your customer list, we can search for individual. So we can put the contact details, we can have a look at custom, custom fields. If we've got text field, drop downs, ability to add you know, information that's not standard in the system. Response times, settings, any kind of customer settings. So any defaults, payment terms, any late payment fee, if they're not, not paying their bills. If we want to add tags, we might want to understand if there are what type of business that they're in, or perhaps we want to understand how they found us. Perhaps there's a preferred technician. So they will always like to work with Jimmy because Jimmy knows them and their, their history. However, I do think it's bad for key man risk if you've got specific technicians. Okay, so we've got open leads. So if we go back to people, we can then filter by sites, suppliers, contacts. And again, they're just all the different sub lists and you can see them again in the tabs there. Now, what we can do is we can quickly create new. So we'll create a new customer and we'll create a new site. So leads, lead is like, you've got to put a customer in. So someone becomes a customer straight away. The lead might be that they want a new patio built and you then have it at their site, which is their, their house, any cost centers. So that might be, you know, residential builds. And then you've got any particular salesperson tag and then you can give it a status and it's nice and obvious there with all the color coding. You can customize those to the stages that you need in your jobs. You've got custom fields, forecast. If you want to give it an estimated price and a probability and a due date, that'll help you understand the sales that you've got coming up in the next month or quarter. Into quotes, if I go to open quotes, all open quotes is like a list of people that you've spoken to, any kind of notes or description that you've put in for it. So this one is stormwater pipe required for flood and safety. PVC pipes to be installed. We can see the parts that have been quoted up. So we've said, yep, we're going to use a downlight, some plaster on the wall. There's going to be a 
cable, some more cable, some more cable, and a wall light. Okay. The notes don't match the parts that are on there, but that's fine. We can see the pricing. So materials costs, resource costs, that's your labor. Any overhead. So you might attribute an amount to per tech, to wages, to insurance, to van and vehicle costs, et cetera, transport. Then that comes down to your markup. It shows you how much profit you're making on each of those. Fees, subtotal, gross margin. That helps you to really understand your business. And once you know your numbers, then you know your profitability. And then you can make sure that your your business is growing, not in decline. Then we can go on to the quote settings. So you might have due dates, your validity, how long it goes till any particular technician forms. Here's our quote description form. It's a PDF. When you're on board with Simpro, they work with you to design up your PDFs, which can all be rendered with things like, you know, your terms and conditions, any particular, you know, logos, or if there's any key information, all of these are brought through with merge tags. So those merge tags help to place the information in the right location and provide a lot of information on those quotes just so that reduces the amount of questions and problems that your your customers will have tasks again you might have a task to call them in seven days just to see where they're at you go to the attachments if you had any external documentation that you needed to provide any contractors that are working so there's no work orders have been created for this cost center then go to logs we can see that when a quote was created when it was set to new and then perhaps when it's accepted all the dates and times along the way parts and labor so that shows us all of the the items that are included on the quote and then again we've got the similar structure and then we can pick the site on the map then we can start to select a particular individual and then schedule for them for those times however it looks as though this resource is not in this work role or in this cost center okay so if we have a look we can also drill back to the customer assets you've got the breadcrumb up here i think a lot of people get lost but if you just click further back you'll get to where you need to be so if we go to quotes that gets us back to the job okay here we are back to CS, CSR Refinery. If we want to look at the schedule, sorry, the customer assets, we have a look at all of them. Okay, so once we've had a look at quotes, obviously there's different phases. So there's completed, approved, closed, etc. But once your quote's been accepted, it becomes a job. So let's have a look at our jobs. These are ones that are pending. This is a new job. So if we click into here, we can see the financials of the jobs. So labor, overhead, although there's nothing here. So potentially this one was just created as a new call out work request. We haven't got anything in there yet. Summary, info, settings, tasks, attachments, and logos. We do have the ability to go through and see the project overview. So in this project overview, we can see budgets, current, actual. At the moment, I've, I've selected just the overview. There is a Gantt chart for resourcing, but I think for project financials, this is quite quite powerful. Let's have a look materials and we can see you know the difference between quoted and, and actuals. And then we have a look in resources, any adjustments that were made, perhaps you want to up the materials or you want to change the hours Then any kind of production schedules that you've got going on, invoices, orders, contracted jobs, jobs and then income. So as money is claimed, I know that in Queensland, there's some fairly hefty requirements for invoicing in the building trade that helps to manage those drawdowns for each of those phases. Again, charts, particularly if you've got a project with tasks and phases, then we can start to add and I'll, I'll go into one of the projects and see if we can find something a little bit more specific there. If we go into recurring, recurring jobs is kind of like a template that will get created on a regular basis. So it's unlikely you're going to have recurring leads, might have a recurring quote, more than likely to have a recurring job. If we go in here, you can see we've got our items. Let's go back. Okay, we can see there's an, a technician assigned that is Beck Barton. And then if we have a look at all, should be able to see all things in the timeline. Okay, so on recurring jobs, you can see it's quite similar to jobs. Obviously, it's a it's a template or something that, that comes up on a regular basis. If I go back to the recurring jobs, it's really just going to give me a list. I've just gone into recurring jobs. I've come to this screen and it's given me a notification saying you need to close something to proceed. Now, if you have a look at the top, you can see I've got one, two, three, four, five things open. Now, this is good and bad. One, it's good that I can have these tabs that are open and I I can flick between them because I've probably got several thoughts going through my mind at once. But by having these tabs here, I can see how many things I've got open, how many jobs I'm partway through. But what I've also done is I've caused myself a mischief because I can only open five at a time, which is good because it forces me to close out the ones that I'm working on and keep the data up to date. So I'm back here on the new recurring job and I've passed that little error message and I can see we're in the recurring job. So I can, again, it's like setting up a normal job, but 
but then we've got the recurring start date and then your frequency. So if it's a monthly and it starts today, then I can put that in. And then if there's any end date or if there's no end date. So the salesperson, the technician, and then from here, it's like any standard job. And then with the labor pit time, I can pre-select any of the defaults and then any of the custom fields as well. So in the jobs or in the recurring invoices section, I can have a look in and see which invoices are being sent out on a regular basis. So we can see engineers report, what have you done? What's the problem location? Any of the financials? I look at the parts and labor. Perhaps we, for example, web hosting. If you're an IT company, you might run the recurring invoice for web hosting. Typically, you would only run a recurring invoice if everything's already done. You would ideally want to create a job so that you can understand exactly what it is that's got to be done by who, and you can assign it to a person to be completed within a particular time frame. So if we go to schedules, I'm going to have a look at day view, and I can see here's that one that we scheduled before. If I wanted to schedule another, I can go and have a look at the jobs. And then once I'm on a job, got a pending jobs, I can right click and then I can go to edit job. I can read only, I can schedule, change the stage, merge, and I can copy. So let's go to schedule job. Perhaps I'm going to do this. It's going to be having a look at the schedule view. I can see that we've got the job here, which we scheduled earlier. We can see this is the day. If I want to go forward or in time or back in time, I can see from before we scheduled one on the 19th and one on the 17th. I can see we scheduled one on the 17th and one on the 18th. We can also see if I want to filter, I can go by employee, cost center, zone and team. If I want to look at the map, I can go all schedules and then I can see what on the map is scheduled where for when. Then if I go back, I can search for a particular job. So I might want to look at anything that's pending, you know, carry out work requests as requested. I can select that one. If I click on the job by right click, you can see that I can see the job, reschedule it, move it, or I can recur it. So if I want it to happen every week or every month or every quarter, and then I can play with other things like the job, the job card, or send notifications out, etc. If I click into the resource, I can see notifications. I can view run sheet. So I can print off a document that they can take in the car and they can go through and get all the details for that. You can see that I've got the one that's from the schedule earlier and it's between these times. You can see in the schedule here that I can, if I hover over, you can see the arrows appear, which allows me to schedule, but it allows me to extend it if I think it's going to take longer. But I think that at the moment I'm editing it, so I can't actually do that right now. If you have a look at the gray areas either side, I can actually see what the availability of this, this tech is so that I can see that and it only works till 3 p.m. So I can't really extend much further without having to put another tech on the job, which would probably be this Ash person who's got more availability in the afternoon. There's week view, there's month view, there's project view, which is in the Gantt chart sort of format. I can do that by employee view as well, which shows me the days that they can work or not work. Uh, and then when I go on to manual, I might be able to select a particular job, then any kind of reference, and then cost center, start date, finish date. So there's a number of ways to do any one thing. And at the moment, that's for me. If I go into materials, let's go to catalog. The catalog allows us to say, for example, we click into this appliance. This is a, a category. And now there's all these appliances underneath that category. I'd imagine that's a subcategory. And then I can, here we go, ceramic cooktop. Perhaps I might be able to create another item, in which case I can add the details, the pricing and different pricing tiers, track any known suppliers, linked items. So then on the materials, again, we've got the ability for credits, purchase orders, supplier quotes, receipts. And then on the invoices, we can go through and track and manage each of these individual invoices. I've run into that issue of not having too many tabs open, which is good. It kind of forces me to come back here and I can review that, finish what I need to do, save and finish and then go on to the next one. If I go back here, I've now reduced my number of tabs. Theoretically, I can go back to invoices, go to unpaid invoices, select one, and that's opened a new record here. And again, it just helps with housekeeping, helps make sure that whatever I'm doing in the system, that I don't get halfway through and then not finish it, which I kind of like that feature. I think it could annoy you at first, but if you understand why it's there, it's actually a big help. Here we've got some details here. We also do have this footnote, which helps to 
buy some payment notes there. Perhaps you put in your bank account details there. If I go to custom forms, there's our description PDF. So that's our tax invoice that's come through. And we can see there's the asset items that were mentioned. So this is a six monthly service for those two. It's brought in the pricing details. Perhaps there were some other items that you could put on there. You could put your labor. Let's go back to this one, see payments. So if they've paid, then we can add a payment. Otherwise we can add a credit note. Now, bearing in mind, if you do have zero, then it can be a two way. So if we click here, we've got the invoice number. Uh, you can have two way sync that it would bring that invoice back. Now, point to note on this is we've got the invoice breakdown here, which has got all of the line items here, but it looks as though on the invoice that we displayed earlier, that we didn't necessarily want to have, we just wanted to have the, the service and the maintenance that you maybe didn't want to have that you used duct tape or, or something like that. So if you used a, a, a line item for consumables, then you could have that hidden away in here without actually having to display it. So let's go back over here. If we go back to invoices Then we can filter by, you know, paid invoices, contractor unpaid invoices, contractor invoices, is quite handy because you need to keep good relationships with your suppliers and you want to make sure that you're going to look after each other so that there's any kind of delays in payment or, or whatever you kind of got each other's back and it just really really helps that way we've got a, a project id tasks inside tasks we've got the ability to add a basic task let's go test match the keyboard and then if we go to custom fields any particular stakeholders if the task involves the owner and the general manager then you can put those in there attachments link tasks logs fill out the following customer a little bit of forcing me to put the right details in which i grab here let's go to that one go to save so it's allowing me to add a task yep okay and we stayed on the task and we've got the estimated time actual time we can start the timer we can see internals who worked on it priority so that helps us to make sure that we are providing good service with the right people involved right so if i refresh this page there's our task that's turned up here and i've got options and task and i can there's no related files i know that the documents library has a whole bunch of pdfs in there which you can get designed and simpro will work with you on how to get those to be on brand to be relevant to your industry so we go to asset costing this is just an image file and then if we go to utilities, we've got maintenance planner. So maintenance planning is a effective way to make sure that you've got the right people, the right equipment. So if we select the date range, we'll say next month, year to date. If we go for foods, go to search. And there's some maintenance jobs coming up in the future. So now that I've run that search, I can go, right, I'm going to do this one on that date, that one on this date. And you can go through and proactively deal with each of those maintenance requests or those assets that are due for renewal update. We've got call center, which allows me to create a new service job. So ideally, if someone's called up on the phone, very short notice that I can quickly go and create a job. So call center is just a very simple cut down version. So if you've got someone who's just taking calls, then they can very quickly go create project and you know, select the customer or create new. So we can do that one. And we can see that there's our customer cost center. Yes, it's what needs to happen. And then we are going to go to site. And we'll just select that one, finish. Okay, so now we've got schedule booking. Now we've got all of these available. So now that we've booked, we can quickly see that we've got the service job. They need someone on site and we can see any kind of notes, description. And then we can say, all right, well, we want them booked for Wednesday. We've got availability and they're booked for Wednesday. Particularly if the job, you think it's going to be, you know, an hour, two hours. I do like the ability to be able to quickly book stuff in so that you can make sure that you actually get that customer and that you secure their business. So having that call center function, if you've just got someone taking calls, I've got a problem here. Yep, we can get someone to you on Wednesday. Great. If it's a plumber, it's an electrician, you know, ideally if you can get it the same day, great. Awesome. If not, then you've got the ability to see when your next schedule availability is. Okay. So it's a very simple cut down version and I can just go and create, create, create. And ideally that just looks like a very simple way to be able to create new jobs. If we look at plant and equipment, this is a way to track your own equipment to make sure that you 
you've got what you need in your business and that you know how to use it. Customer assets, obviously you've got asset type and then you can drill down and just see how many air conditioners you've got. Perhaps there's a particular type or range of air conditioner or maybe, you know, say for example, in summer, that's a great time or in winter, even, it might be a great time to go and service them to make sure that you can reduce your risk of issues when it comes to summer and everybody's booked out. Let's go down here. Let's look at business toolkit. So business toolkit is some advanced reports that allow you to see labor costs, material costs, and just identify how much profit you're making on each of these. So that's really good if you're managing your numbers effectively. Import and then SMS. So SMS is a great way to make sure that you can get contracts on site at the right times. So going to reports, and we've got quite a range of reports here. So pricing, you can see your assets and leads, suppliers, you can identify all sorts of issues there in advance. Schedule reports, I do like a schedule reports. So you've got, for example, you can see profit and loss every, every week, or you could see numbers Number of employees and what their activities are with summary at the end of the week okay. work in progress jobs so there are some cool features in here which i think i can't show you at the moment but i quite like one you've got the ability to have safe searches so you might be able to see you know all your open quotes or something like that or any custom search that are relevant to you you've got this call option here so you've got a voice over ip phone that you can plug into the system you've got the ability to you know obviously track all your notifications one of my favorite places to go and check out is settings so the settings are one of the best places to go to be able to see what's possible in the platform. I've also got the access to the multi-company now, so you can at least see what it looks like. Okay, so back on the application here, we've got this drop down here and you can see there's a whole bunch of the multi-company entities just in there. But I'm just going to stay on the settings section here. And in the settings section, I've got, again, we've got our main menu across here and then we've got our sub-menus along here. So we look at labor, we can do our labor rates. So you might have like a junior tech, a senior tech, and then any other, maybe like your partner or, or the, the owner, you might have different rates for each person that's going out to site. And then you've got with your service fees, you might be able to have like a fixed service fee. So say for example, you're going to do an installation of aircon and you know that it's going to take about three hours and you've already priced out all the equipment and all the, you know, maybe the hardware and all that sort of stuff. So with a service fee, you can just go, this is an all inclusive. And, you know, because you do it on such a regular basis, you're more efficient at it. So ideally you can do it in half an hour instead of an hour, but that shouldn't mean that you punish yourself because you're good at something. Thing, it means you should use service fees to give a fixed price quote on that. Okay, materials. So we've got pricing tiers, purchase stages. So purchasing stages might be on back order, ordered, or in this case, it says fit off, rough in, but it's kind of giving it just an estimate of what we think is involved. You might need a couple extra meters or something as an example. And then we've got units of measure, inventory tracking. We're going to commissions. You want to provide a sales commission to someone who is helping you to get that deal over the line. Then you can track that in here with the these, these particular rates. Catalog items, pre-built items, one-off labor, memberships. It looks like you can provide some level of membership tier for services. So someone, if they're getting regular services from you, you can create a tier of membership to give them a discount. It encourages that repeat purchase and that loyalty. Security groups is kind of like your permission sets. So who can see what? So we've got God mode here. We've got office staff. It just helps, you, particularly if you're giving a a remote access in in mobile group to someone like a contractor who's external they don't need the financials maybe they just need i need to turn up i need to do this job and then i go home and then i clock the time we go to activities activity types so when people are tracking time obviously at lunch break if we go to accounts then we've got our chart of accounts which you can map to your zero or my or quickbooks chart of accounts cost centers so say for example you might have your building services you might have your manufacturing services you might have different areas Areas to your business groups. It's another way to divide that up. Tax codes, so GST or GST free, payment methods, accounting categories. So it just helps you to really slice and dice your, your database. Response times, you can set what your response time should be so that you can provide some form of service level agreement. So say, for example, an issue, super urgent and urgent, something breaks down, you can say that we need to be there within 30 minutes. So that's the target. And it'll start to affect things like due dates on tickets and whether something is marked as overdue or not. Okay, we've got custom fields. Custom fields are a great way to be able to grab that extra information. So on the customer account, we might be able to add, create a custom field and we can add different field types. So we've got text, date, list, or numeric. So text just being a single 
normal string of text, date, self-explanatory, list. So you might have good, better, best, there's three pick list options in a list and they can select one. And then numeric, so you might go 5, 10, 15, 20. So I should qualify that with 5, 10, 15, 20 would actually be a numeric list. So what I would suggest is numeric is where you can enter purely a number. So you would be able to enter it on a keyboard and it could be anything from between one or 999 million. If we go into accounts status code. So I've gone into status codes here and we've got, you know, so for example, lead, quote, send, deposit paid, awaiting parts, all of those sorts of things. But then you've got another area here, which is the status code automation triggers. So you might be able to say that, oh, so here we go, a lead has been created and then it will give the status of new lead. You might be able to say a lead has a due date reached. So now it's going to go overdue lead or something like that. You would have to create that status and then you could give it that status. Then you could have different triggers. So as these occur, so work order has been dispatched. So maybe you might want to update it to dispatched just so that you can automatically move things forward. And then we've got jobs and, and stage-based triggers. And then you've got these other statuses as well, project stage status given. Let's go now to tags. The tags are a great way just to give a bit of information, but they don't really need to do anything else other than just to give you some background info. So you can turn them on or off at the moment they are off. Task templates are quite handy. If we want to jump into one of these, we can see that there's um, subtasks and then a duration. So you might go, this one takes one day each. And then as a, as a group, that's one, two, three, four, five. So it might take six days in total. You can see there's an attachment on each of these. So if we show, we can see the description. We can see the attachment here. So in this case, it's probably just a test one. Or well, there we go, terms and conditions. But you might be able to have a special on that task, maybe a demonstration walkthrough or a description of what to do for that task. It really helps to have that sort of thing, particularly when you're allocating tasks to other people. You want to be able to make it as seamless as possible, as easy for someone to follow as possible and reduce the amount of questions. The task categories, we've got sub -e trades tasks. You might have admin tasks. Here we go, office, project management. You might have perhaps anything to do with permits, tasks that allow you to group everything together so nothing gets missed. Customer groups, you might decide to group as they've done here. Builders, commercial, corporate, national, maybe government. I can see there's one here for lawyer. Perhaps whoever's set this up wants to charge lawyers more. I don't know, but they've got a separate one there. Or maybe you might have another one group for friends or something like that or partners or any kind of other business that allows mates rates deal or something. Go into customer profiles. This is where we get to add our customer types, a customer profile. I think it's really good to have some level of health report or health check on each customer just so that you can sort of say these people are good for us, bad for us, etc. I think relationship health and relationship status are one of the most underrated things that you can put onto a customer record. They help you to steer the conversation. You know, there might be a high paying, high quality customer and be having a rough day and be really angry about something. If you can see past that, then you could get back to the happy place and have a really good, happy customer moving forward. But if they're a painful customer on an ongoing basis and then you have a really good interaction with them, maybe that might not necessarily be a sign that things are looking up, particularly if they've got a history of you know, being positive and wonderful one minute and then quite painful and difficult the next. I know that if you've ever been in business, you've definitely had people try to manipulate you to try and get a better deal, to try and you know get delays on invoice, to perhaps you know get a discount on certain things. So it pays to be able to track these sorts of things, particularly when you've got a larger number of people in your office and you need to be able to show that on the, in the system so that anyone else who picks up the phone, you know, there's a concept if mum says no, ask dad, or if dad says no, ask mum. That's where one person that you speak to doesn't necessarily give you the answer that you want. You call back and you get somebody else who gives you a different answer. So I would be very cautious to allow those sorts of things to happen in your business. And the best way to prevent that is with some form of status on the customer health or the customer relationship health. So back in here, we've got tasks. So with task templates, task categories, gone through those. So in zones, I've just clicked on zones now and your zones might be your service areas. Maybe you don't service outside of a particular group of postcodes. You can, perhaps you've got a map or something on the, that you've drawn on the board, you can start to indicate what zone. And then maybe if you've got different teams, we looked before in the teams inside of the scheduling area, you can use those teams to work in those areas, particularly if you've got multi-site and different offices, 
You might be able to have those sites with those staff and then you can allocate those jobs in those zones with those staff allocated to those zones or those teams allocated to those zones. Scripts. So scripts are a really great way to provide just that nice level of marketing detail when you're busy and you're flat out. So say, for example, you're going to send someone out to a job. You want to be able to give them a bit of a, a text description of this is what's going to happen. This is what to expect. These are the stages of the process. One of these texts will be out and they will run through the, the process with you. And then by the end, you'll have this result. It just helps to have a nice email because I know that when I'm busy, I'm probably just going to write one liners, which isn't a great marketing feel. So to have a really good, nice pre-written script when you're you know, not necessarily as busy really helps to make the relationship a little bit more seamless and transition. So to have a script makes it really nice to have a more seamless conversation with your customer without having to do all those one-liner emails just at that last minute. So in these script templates, we've got different areas that those script templates are for. These ones at the moment are for leads and quotes. You can have a different set for jobs, invoice, order, task, and that just helps again with those nicer conversational pieces. Now I'm hovering over customer assets here and if I go to asset builder, we can customize the way the assets are displayed. So if we go to appliance here, then we've got type of appliance clients, we can give it a section and an area like a hierarchy. Different service levels allow you to create different sort of schedules for creating those services. So in this one, we've, we're able to create a monthly service, a weekly service, quarterly, yearly, six monthly, whatever. So if we go in here with the annual, we can have a charge rate. So maybe you've got a fixed fee for that one. We're going to do it every one year. Any options, we can edit the failure points. So the failure point might be broken cord, and then you can give it a whole bunch of other value points. So maybe we say rust in the bottom. And then for each of those, you might say if there's a standard, like a document that you have to follow and then the severity. So a broken cord would be critical. If it's a blind, probably not. But if it's something else that's a little bit more important, so maybe broken power cord is going to be more critical, but you would explain that. And then in the pre-build, you can put in, uh, say for example, what the cost might be to replace it. So when you have an issue with an appliance, you can then provide an instant quote with how much it's going to cost to fix. And then you've got the ability to add custom fields. So you want to add different things like serial numbers, the location, any of those sorts of things, you can add custom fields. So again, we've got barcode, numeric list. So we can add those to the asset type. You can have test readings if you've got to test something. With a text string, you might say it's got to be within 10 to 12 volts. We might say it's got to be within 10 to 12 you know, hectopascals or something like that. Depending on what, so maybe the wear rate could be a number of millimeters in the gap between engine parts or something like that. Those sorts of readings allow you to make sure that it's meeting all the right criteria. And if it doesn't, then you know to go and give it a, a fault or an error or something like that. And then any attachments, maybe any guides, how-to articles. In service levels, you can create your different service levels here. So we've got some 10 yearly, 25 three monthly, three yearly, 30 yearly. Some of those are quite large, but daily, quarterly, monthly, whatever those schedules are, maybe fortnightly relevant to you. Maybe after 21 days, you might just have a single event and it's not necessarily recurring. Then you know you can go in and create that here. Then when we go down to plant builder, so you might have a piece of equipment that you have internally, then you can create that here and then you've got the custom fields. So let's just go down to archive reasons. Archive reasons are like the reason why you would close out a lead. If we go here, we can close out leads, quotes, and jobs. So not interested, time waster, you know, went with competitor, perhaps on the quote side, it might be something like user error, lost a competitor, too expensive. Um, and then on the currency side, so if you're dealing in, say for example, you're importing a part from the US, that you can provide that in the US, you can then add your exchange rate in here and then charge that out in Australian dollars. And then of course, you've got two-factor authentication and API connections. So if I go to the form setup. We do have the ability to create custom forms. Now, a lot of the forms are created by Simpro and you can see here we've got PDF viewer, email setup, and we've got some things here on the forms. We can add things like barcodes. We can add certificate of maintenance, which is like text or like a sort of terms equivalent. If you go into each of these documents, so credit note, you might be able to add different templates for each. So, and then you can set up an email. So when the credit note goes, it'll also grab the document. Same for things like run sheet. So we've got project customer. These are all the fields that are on there. Get an email set up. Then we can set up the email so that when we send the run sheet, go dear employee name, please find the run sheet of date range. Please complete your work diligently, etc. So you can put that text into the email. If I go now to platform defaults, we've got systems, auto save. Do we want to honor 
off? Do we want prepaid time? So customer-based is, it depends on who the customer is, but if we say customer and site-based. So if you just wanted a blanket, yes, we want prepaid time. Or if you wanted to say on the customer and site, so maybe, for example, you're a large customer, they've got multi-site, maybe they're a franchise. So each site attracts a different rate, then you can do that there, or whether or not it's prepaid time. Things like purchase orders, what are the defaults? Locking of jobs, mandatory date on job creation. So service jobs or project jobs. I would say due dates on service jobs, particularly if you have urgency to the work that you're doing. If it's aircon, for example, maybe it's not urgent, but it would be nice to, to get it done sooner. But if it was some kind of like medical services that you need to provide or some fire safety services, then yeah, you definitely need a due date. It needs to be done within three days or whatever the compliance schedule is. If we go over here, we can look at the financials. You've got all your account lines. So when you're doing integrations, the accounts go to the right chart of account lines in zero or QuickBooks, et cetera. Schedule settings. So how much time do we want to see? Do we want to do wide or do we want to see a lot within, within one screen? Block height, do we want a lot of text or do we want to keep it really short? And then when we're having a look into your extensions, we've got SimTrack, Navman. So these are things that integrate into SimPro payments via mobile enterprise or customer portal. Then we've got things like customer portal and then all of their settings. So you can send emails, what's displayed in their ePortal they can see their attachments, yes or no. So there's enabled pages. You can decide what pages they can see. So that can they see their quotes or do they only see their jobs? Do you want them to see invoices? Things like that. We go over to mobile. So mobile has some general settings. For example, you've got the ability to manage your statuses. You can see audits, what forms are they completed? For example, JSAs, et cetera. And then invoicing, how are you taking your payments? Are you taking Bitcoin, cash? Are you going to trade horses? What's your, your, your payment method? If we go over to... Simpro Mobile, Simpro Connect. So there's two mobile applications. You've got Simpro Mobile and then you've got Simpro Connect. Simpro Connect is the new one. Make sure you get the relevant one for yourself. So if we go to company, we've got different companies. So in this one, we can see that we've got these multi companies here. This is where you set those up and you give them a, a label and a company ID number. So if you want to create another one, obviously you've got shared defaults. The shared defaults, these sorts of things could be really good if you've got a franchise. So say for example, you've got maybe shared catalogs, shared stock, you wouldn't do in a franchise because everybody owns their own stock. So you would have probably, yes, a shared catalog because you've got the pricing. You might have some shared default settings to make sure that everyone bills the same. Shared customers, probably not in a franchise. But if you had an internal group with a lot of other companies that are maybe each site had its own proprietary limited company, then you could do that. Then when you have accounts integration, invoice numbering, et cetera. So you might use the shared accounts integration because you only want to have it going to each individual each individual site is like a business unit but not necessarily it's over a the limited company and then shared VoIP details if everybody's using the same phone we go to accounts integration at the moment this is set up as zero and we can see what's actually going through so suppliers will export supplier invoices which is bills and then we've got a two-way sync so when we go to VoIP we can set our IP or phone. We go to shared payments, square payments, then we can integrate the payments link and then people can pay with a click of a button. And then integrations, any other integrations that would come through here. So that was SimPro Software, a field service management platform that you can use in your business to be able to move your service staff around, to be able to quote effectively, to be able to invoice effectively, and to make sure that you're saving the time, getting the billing and capturing that revenue the way that you should be in order to grow your business. Once you've got all your data, into a system, you can then use that as your value proposition. Should you want to exit at any point in the future, you've got a asset. It's not all stuck in your head. It's something that's in, it's baked into a system that you can hand over to somebody else with all the history, customer information, etc. Makes it a lot easier to be able to scale and to be able to sell. So it's really, really important to make sure that you are using the system effectively. So thank you for watching the SimPro demo and please have a look at some of the other videos we've got. Give us a like, a subscribe, a thumbs up. It helps us to reach more people in the future. So if you had any other things you'd like us to cover, please let us know in the comments and we look forward to catching you next time.